Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Brandon and Drew went out to Mexico, so it's just me and the boys today. We're gonna have a little special guest later here in the video, so make sure you stay tuned. I just wanna let you guys know before this video gets started, there's a lot of really, really good and valuable investment advice um, and just kind of reselling advice in general in this video. This is for people who are getting into reselling, newer people, and this is also for the experienced people. And if you guys just wanna have a good time, um, we got a good, again, special guest later. So just wanna let you know up front, jam-packed video with information. It can be extremely valuable to you if you t pay attention and use it wisely. Um, so before we get into these unboxings real quick, let's go. Is when we leave All right, you guys, God, I just never get uh, never get tired of that intro. It's been looking real good, I gotta say. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Got some good feedback in the last video, so I appreciate it, you guys. I basically just went into some of the older projects of last year, some of the events and stuff. Pulled some of my favorite clips of B-roll that we shot, and uh, you guys can tell where some of those events were. Drop a comment. Looks like we got a PO right here. He said thank you, and I would like to say thank you. All right, looks like we got a pair of Jordan 1, maybe some lows right here. We got a size 11 in the bread toe Jordan 1 lows. You guys already know our opinions on these. We gave this to you guys a couple months ago when we were at Heated Soul. We talked about that shoe um, kind of investment wise. So we've been buying those up pretty good, mostly in grade school sizing, um, cause those seem to do really well, but we got a men's pair right there. Next box looks like it's from the homie Lopez. We got a pair of 350s right here. Hopefully there's a note inside the box and there is. Looks like we just got another PO. And this is gonna be a Beluga 350. You guys know we don't buy a lot of 350s anymore, um, Yeezys in general, but we've been buying a lot of foam runners, slides, and then as you guys can see right here, the Belugas, the reflective. So um, we actually just sold a pair today and we've been selling a lot of these. So it's a pretty good shoe. Um, we seem to be rinsing and repeating it pretty quickly. That's a size eight and a half. That will be on the website available for you guys. And we just got a couple more little boxes right here. Looks like another pair of Jordan 1 Lowe's. Oh. Wow. So I actually went to our special guest house before I came here. Um, so we actually talk about this shoe later in the video. I'm not going to talk about it too much right now, but you guys saw last video. In this video, we picked up a couple pair of the Jordan 4 bread golf shoes. All right. I'm going to keep my lips sealed on that one. You guys will hear a little bit more about that one later. And then we got one big box to end it off today. Real sweet and short. It's a Sunday here, so we don't get too many packages. Next video will be a whole lot of unboxing, so I hope you guys are ready for it. And on top of that, our boy Steve is out of town. He went on a little vacation, so I don't know. We're gonna put someone else in charge of unboxings this week. Maybe Nate? I don't know. He's behind the camera right now. Uh, looks like we got a pack of dunks right here. Some black and whites. Some customers were just asking. Um, it looks like we got a little bit of a pack right here. Size nine and a half. Looks like some men's sizing right here. Some size 12s and looks like about a size run of them. So you guys can shop these, commonhypeaz.com if you guys are in need of some black and whites. So before we get into the meat of the video, I wanna talk to you guys about a couple of the recent releases, the Cool Grays and the Patent Jordan 1 Breads. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in this video about long-term holds in these. So we posted a picture on Instagram a couple days ago um, with Steve in front of the sign and a bunch of Cool Grays. So I don't wanna mislead you guys and let you know that we're investing in them. It's not exactly the case. So we're gonna get into that a little bit later and then kind of talk about the Patent Breads and what's kind of gonna go on with these. Now, these are just two examples that we use, but we talk about sneakers in 2022 as a whole. Um, there's a lot of changes being made this year by the companies, the distribution of them, um, how they're gonna be released, how many stores you're getting them, how many Nike's gonna take for themselves to release on sneakers, and a whole bunch of other things that um, can provide you guys a little bit of value and insight on what's going on this year. So we're gonna head over again. It's gonna be a little bit longer of a portion, but there's a lot of information in it, so I hope you guys use it wisely. We try and steer you guys in the right direction, um, and we're not wrong very often, so take it with a grain of salt. Hopefully you guys get something out of it, and uh, let's head over to the special guest house. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I told you we would have a special guest today, and here he is. Listen, Steven was unboxing the last video, and uh, he made this comment right here. Please give out more selling and investing tips. P.S. Where's Johnson? And everyone's been asking, where's Johnson? Well. Here, here, here he is. Here I am. Listen, this room, take a little spin over there, Sam. Shout out to Sam, by the way. He's helping us on the camera today. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, um, all that used to be University Blues. Mostly University Blues, right? Yeah. A whole yeah. lot of other stuff, but black and white dunks for sure. Um, you guys know the market on that, so he's been buying up some new stuff. Maybe not tell you about everything he's been buying. Some stuff has to stay on the low, but we are going to talk about- We're still about, buying. We're still buying, currently buying, yeah. yeah. But there is some stuff we're going to talk to about today, so we'll start it off with these just because the video is kind of based around these and these have just been a really hot commodity. Me and Johnson were just talking about the sales volume that these have done. 
in the first couple months of being released. So give us your thoughts and comments about it. Yeah, well, I think I think it's important to know that I probably only bought like 12 pairs of these, honestly, and larger sizes and have them at consignment. So currently this, I mean, this is your pair you brought over. I, I don't have any of these in stock. I think the drop was a total mess in regards to distribution and, and where they were to get the pairs and how they were to have them in stock. I think they, the, I feel like the drop too is kind of like misleading in a sense that everyone thought they'd be an easy shoe to get because there were so many of them and then they were hard to get on release day so people started freaking out thinking maybe they were more limited and kind of overvaluing them and that's kind of why the market went up and down up and down and then kind of has now came back down and sat a little bit because the release was just kind of everywhere. I would agree they had two huge exclusive releases and pairs back before it even dropped are were lower than they are now yeah. actually we should have all bought pairs before they officially released yeah. if you go Which back and look rare. at the numbers it's very rare in a gr like that in a classic shoe like that you never buy early because it's like the patent breads no one really knows what to do you buy patent breads early at 600 650 obviously now they're down to 300 whatever they're at it's scary to buy early shoes that you know there's going to be a lot of you can never really just predict what the releases are going to do nowadays because everything's backed up all the time everything's delayed all the time they're releasing you know in delayed in, in other countries too you know when uk pairs drop canada pairs um and they drop elsewhere that's not in the united states it affects the u.s market because a lot of these platforms that you can sell on are international markets yeah so this drew, shoe has started to drop over the last two weeks and i simply think that that's not a supply i don't think more supply has been brought into the into the market i think it's just the sheer demand of of the shoe over that month and what's interesting the demand for the shoe is huge yeah if you go and look huge. at last 12 months of sales on like stock x this is the third shoe on the list after white on white air force ones and black and white dunks in the last 12 months and it's only sold for two months and it's important to mention that these are beating yeezy slides they're beating university blue fours university blue ones raging bull fives like shoes that have been out and have a yeah, high demand year. and that you see everyone wearing and i was just mentioning to him cool grays are hot and everything but i personally haven't seen a lot of people like out in public wearing them and you see a lot of people in black and whites all white air forces obviously yeezy slides all the time but that's just not a shoe so we're just trying to figure out where all the pairs are why are people wearing them maybe it's just some maybe i just haven't seen them here in arizona i know a lot of people on the east coast like it's more of an east coast shoe wearing 11s kind of more casually but it's just interesting yeah so the viewers are asking the question hearing us talk about all this yeah. stuff going like okay 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 but what do you think yeah what, what do we think the fact that i don't have any in stock says something i think this shoe reminds me a lot of the hyper royals when they hit they were up at 400 dollars, and it was a hype shoe but over time they came down to 360 down to about 340 330 because the supply those shoes were stuck in containers within the supply chain and they slowly got released months after the release and the and the price just continued to go down i think there's a similar function that can happen with this now i don't think it's going to be as drastic a decline as the hyper royals if you go and look at the trends on that but i think this will slowly come down i haven't seen a shoe very rarely have i seen a shoe that the 10 and a half 11 and 12 are so much higher than the 10s nine and a half and nine they typically are mm -hmm. especially in a shoe like this mm -hmm. but it's drastically different yeah i mean it's 15 to 20 percent different i would buy what you can sell right right now that that's where i would be at i know that's where you guys are at. right yeah, yeah you're buying what you can sell through the shoes and what and in the store and what you can move and that's the same thing we're doing so everything we bought is already at consignment being sold i don't have any holds because i don't think it's at the bottom and i don't think you ever try to hold the shoe until you believe that it's hit the bottom you buy it then you hold it because it's yeah. Go up. Well, it's also like we've been talking about, it might be a pair maybe in a month or so that you buy a couple of and sit on them. But for the most part, it's similar to the Jubilees in the sense that the Jubilees released, they went up and down, did their thing, and they've just been sitting at where they've been sitting. Now, the one advantage I think the Cool Gray has, obviously, is that it's an OG colorway. Mm -hmm. And so it has a little more desire, but the supply on these is also really high, similar to the Jubilees. And if this is going to be a hold for you, this is going to be like a 12 to 24 month hold. That's what me and Brandon were talking about. It's a long term hold because you don't really know where the number's gonna be. And you guys know we just posted on our Instagram, um, Steven was standing there next to the pile of Cool Grays. It's like he said, we're just selling what we can sell right now. We're only buying what we know we're gonna be able to sell. It might've been misleading as kind of an investment when we do those big pictures, everything we're holding. We're honestly not holding them. That's just how many we've been moving in store, um, which is great because there's a demand on the street for them 
despite kind of where the market's at right now. There's a lot of better shoes out there that you can put your money into right now that you can get your money back out of in a couple months, more short term, um, that you kind of see a better return, like the golden rods. They're 140, low risk. You read the trends on dunks, they're probably gonna go up. Give it a couple months around spring, summertime when those colors are more relatable. And that's like a shoe you would put your more money into. Other than the buy-in on these is just too high. I think investors, resellers, I, I think we get caught up in the hype too. Yeah. And we want to buy and hold the hype shoe. Yeah. And then we sit there and go like, oh, that wasn't as hype as, as to make money. I can look at the Jordan 4 Lightnings that I still have in stock. I didn't even sell them through Christmas. I sold everything else. This, this room was empty. Yeah. Oh, I Christmas, know. I know. Except my Lightnings. Yeah. And that's because the Lightnings still have... And that lightnings are a good example. A lot of stock. As they get sold and they start to get worn and stuff and they start to run out as far as stock is out there, they'll start to climb and move like the Jordan 4 University Blues, mm -hmm. right? All of a sudden you see them, they're, they're sitting at a number up and down, up and down, and then all of a sudden they spike. That's what we want to try to find. We want to try to find those times where something is, is staying for a while and then all of a sudden the pairs get distributed amongst the, the people, start getting worn, and then they start having people to rebuy or buy them to wear them and they start to go up a shoe will not increase hype or not unless it's a wearable shoe it has to be worn because then it the dead stock supplies goes by yeah. go, goes goes away we were talking about another shoe the jordan one starfishes i think the jordan one low starfish has potential mm -hmm. but at the time a month ago i was investing in neutral grays they're the same price 200 bucks i'd rather be in neutral grays because they had been released for longer, wearable shoe, people want to restock up on it. And so we were buying Jordan 1 Neutral Grays. Well, look at the prices now. Starfishes have stayed about that 200, 210, and Neutral Grays have started on their ascent, mm -hmm. where they you know, started to go up. Yeah. And that's because it's been out longer, the pairs are out there, and you want to catch it like we did the Shadow 2.0s. Mm -hmm. Hit well, them at Shadow like, 2.0s. Hit them at that. like 230, we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. 230, 230, 230, 230, 230, okay, bye. Boom, now they're yeah. 325. Right when neutral grays came out, we talked about it and we said, it's probably going to take a little bit, but this shoe is, it's going to go up. Yeah. Look at them now. Yeah. I mean, you, you 250, 260 to get yeah. yourself a pair now. Yeah. I doubled so up. I doubled up early though. Okay. I got my double up early in. So I think this shoe is very similar. I think that it's going to, I think that it's going to stay at where it's at now could go down some based on some supply being found out yeah. in distribution centers or whatever but or in containers but this shoe will stay where it's at for months and you make money on it yeah you know buying it for 280 selling it for 350 in store you make money yeah but this shoe from a investment standpoint i think there's other stuff if you had 320 bucks to hold, I think there's other stuff. Yeah. I think there's two dunks you could buy at 160 and you could make 500 bucks on. Yeah. So another hot release right now is, and I don't have, we don't have a pair here, but the patent breads. So we were just talking yeah. about the patent breads upstairs before we came down here and filmed. That's another interesting shoe. So I mentioned a couple minutes ago that that was like a pre-release if you wanted to hands on it early before there was kind of too much information about the release out. Um, it was like a $600 pre-order or just to get them early, just to have in hand yeah. pairs early. Like you're, you're spending five to 600 and that's a hard price to sell at much more to get a good profit margin off of it. Now, obviously they've came down and people are wondering kind of what's going to happen next. So, um, we made some comparable examples out of the UNC patents, um, which was a women's shoe, I think in 20. 18, 2019. I might be wrong about the date, but it was a couple years ago. The baby blues. Right. And then there's also the gold toe patents. Gold toe. The kind of drive between those and the prices they're at now, because that, those are a patent shoe, which people claim to be harder to wear and stuff. But those are two shoes that are sitting up there pretty high around um, the UNCs are in like the 500. They're six, high. they're five, 600 bucks. Yeah. yeah. And then the gold toes are what, around four? No, they're up there. The gold toes are up there too, but that's min sizing. So they're both $500 shoes, but you were saying. My take on that was just kind of the, the hype brought up around it. So the gold toes dropped after the Complex Con gold toes dropped, which was the two different uh, two different colored shoes that dropped at the Complex Con. And then they released the gold toes after the fact. So basically everyone wanted the gold toes that they released at Complex Con. Super limited, couldn't get them. So they GR'd them 
and then the public had access to them. And that was kind of the drive behind that. And that was a couple years ago as well, but prices just steadily increased because again, it's hard to find a DS pair of that. And then the UNC's on the other hand was kind of one of the first like good women's Jordan ones that they did. The colorway was solid, women's sizing, it did really well for girls shoes. Hat and breads, there's just a lot of supply. Obviously you have the bread colorway, which helps. I didn't think they dropped to like 300. You, you don't think they will? I didn't think they'd be as low as they were. I think hmm. when they dropped, it would be a steady $400 shoe. Mm -hmm. Just because of the colorway, simply. It mm -hmm. is a harder shoe to wear. It's probably wouldn't I wouldn't personally buy myself just because of the wearability of it. But there's grade school sizing in those as well. They didn't do grade school sizing with the with the gold toes and yeah, stuff. Full so. family size run on that one. Preschool. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of want to lean in the direction that they're going to start creeping up. But a lot of those patent shoes took a lot of time to go up. So as far as like a timeline, I personally don't have like a, a set timeline that I think that they'll go up at a certain point. Yeah, a typical Jordan 1 high release will be 100,000 pairs. So men's sizing or whatever is 100,000 pairs. When they do family size runs, then they, they'll, they'll add them. The thing that's interesting when they do full family size runs, I personally think that it helps the men's sizing. Visibility of shoes is important. So whether a shoe gets drops on sneakers app where everybody can see it, whether it's in stores, whether there's social media posts about it, uh, when you start talking about uh, TikTok and Instagram posts from influential people, when it starts being seen, it can get some momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that it's family size right I like it as far as uh, long term, six to 12 month hold, I like it. I, it continue to come down because a demand on that is, is a spike demand. Like once people see it, they're like, ooh, I need it. And you saw it go from 400 to 450. It's now back down to like 340, 350. Europe just dropped this last week when US dropped around just after Christmas time. If that shoe was to get anywhere near 300 bucks, 320, uh, don't be surprised if I don't go and hit some and, and hold on to some. I, I really think by next Christmas, it's a $500, this a $500 shoe. Christmas this year? Yeah, Christmas like, this year. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I, I think that it's an unbelievable colorway. I mean, such a strong, understood colorway by basically yeah, everybody yeah. since the last dance too. Yeah. Be careful when you're looking at old history of Jordans and stuff to hold on to prices and stuff that when things drop because the last dance gave everybody Jordans visibility and Jordans just drop at different numbers than they do two years ago or three years ago because of the last dance. Mm -hmm. You had that one UNC Chicago patent mm -hmm. that was sitting at 200 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think a shoe like that that would drop today would no. get down. I had to a pair. I sold them. They went up too much, and they were worn. And I got. Hey, when a, a when a sorry to interrupt. No, I was just gonna. I got more than I even bought them for when I sold them used with no box. Like I didn't need that shoe after I, that. I mean, can we just make a simple point that that Jordan One patent that has the UNC and the this shoe right here barely got below 200. When this shoe can sit at two, stay at 200 today, based on what would get down to 200. This shoe, thank you, the Obsidian. Oh, I was thinking this one too. Well, back in the day, you're right, but this Obsidian, if, this is just before the last dance. Yeah. This dropped, this was just over retail. When you compare these two shoes, there is no comparison. Mm -hmm. So that's where the, just the sheer demand of shoes is different Yeah. for Jordans. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's. And that, this That's one also had a saying. lot of help. So like right when TikTok was pretty new, this seemed to be the shoe that everyone wanted on the app. Um, and that really affected the market because grade school sizing on these just blew up. Sneaker Invest wrote a, a book, The Art of the Hold, mm -hmm. and he kind of explained colorways and different things. And he talked about the social media impact. And mm -hmm. there was an influential lady that has an Instagram that posted with these on. Mm -hmm. And if you go look at the date, the uh, the sales after that just it, the yeah. shoe started to go up yeah crazy definitely jordan's things that you guys have been thinking about everybody wants to know about a patent bread you know hold sell everybody wants to know about the cool grays i think we covered those pretty well but yeah boy the stuff to really make money on is stuff that's you can buy under 200 bucks that gets to 300 bucks you're usually looking at a dunk when you're looking at those those numbers price wise um, but it's just catching them at the right time but a lot of I think we talked about more today than we haven't really in the past is when stuff is dropping in other countries. Um, we mentioned like UK dropping a lot um, in this video right now. That affects the US market. Even though it's not here, those UK pairs, they make their way over to the US and they start circulating in the market we have here. And depending on what people are willing to let their pairs go for over there, 
it usually and typically after your UK drop will will trickle down a little bit, the price will go down, and then that's kind of like your buying window. Yeah, I mean we're out of black and white dunks. Yeah. Right now. And I, you have I've got I we I mean we had yeah. 60, 70, whatever the number was. We're out of them. We'll be back into them soon. And because when you see this, the, the prices go up and down, it's because they're restocking them, whether it restocks in Europe, whether it restocks in the US. Huge US demand right now, huge. A lot of shoes are coming from Asia and Europe over here. So the US demand is higher than it's ever been because it used to be two years ago, shoes would go the other way. Um, so US demand is, is super high. I don't think that will change. I actually just sent an article to uh, Brandon this morning from C CNN. I mean, that's national media talking about how Nike is limiting what they're sending to their retailers and distribution network in order that they can sell more through their through their own channels. That's a supply thing and it's a, and it's a margin thing. Yeah. But that means that Nike product will probably be bought and, and sold more within re, reseller stores mm -hmm. like your guys's than ever before. And there's more of your guys' stores have been opened up. So I think demand will stay high for the next year, foreseeable next year. It'll be very good business, but you gotta buy at the right time and, and sell at the right time. Well, think about it too in the sense that Easy Supply, for example, you can bot those sites. You can bot Foot Locker, you can bot Finish Line. Those foot sites and other retail spaces are easier to get access to for botters. Now, we don't really bot anymore. Um, we pay resale for everything. You guys see it in our unboxing videos every single day. So before the comments blow up, you guys bought, <laughs> you guys see us pay resale for everything every day. But sneakers is not really bottable. I mean, it's they really locked down. You used to buy sneakers or at least attempt to, and Try it's just to. not. It's just too much money. Yeah. You, you know, the the life of botting is expensive. Um, so yeah, all these shoes in here I bought or resell. The same thing is, is that uh, Pure Slides I was invested in, sold all of them through Christmas, and but now I'm re-back into them on the, the restock. Mm -hmm. the restock hit 140, 150 on a Pure Slide, I'm, I'm buying them. Yeah. And for those of you that weren't buying them, I don't know why you weren't buying them because the first release one was at 250 when the restock was at 150. If you don't think that those numbers are gonna get similar. People are gonna spend $200 less, even if the OG pair gets away, people are gonna spend 200 less to get the same shoe essentially. Yeah, and in the in the consignment stores I have products says, says that I've sold, Yeah. you know, most of the restocks that I've sent there have sold. Those were buying Yeah. And, and continuing to buy, they'll continue to go up. Brandon will say by spring, and yeah, they will restock and everything. It's just about timing. You gotta decide to know when to be in and out and selling. We're always selling. I'm always selling. Yeah. It's hard for me to hold because I wanna always be selling along the way. So I guess I gotta be buying more than I'm selling, which means that I'm holding a certain amount. Yeah. Which is which is funny. But you know, you don't get attached to them. You just yeah, you know when it's time. I'm not attached, yeah. Yeah. And I see, you know, Archeo Pinks I was into early. early. And then, and then, you know, at one, yeah. 140, 150. Yeah. And then you and Sneaker Invest drop these videos and the things are at 210. Now I'm, you know, buying them for a lot more than I'd like to because I do think it's a $300 shoe. I just would much rather be buying them at 160. Right. Knowing that they're going to be a $300 shoe. Yeah. But same thing there. They they'll stay at 200 for a little bit, little bit until they start being worn and being uh bought and undes and then they'll and then I think, they'll start their second climb i think by summer this year like right around the april yeah maybe right yeah when, right yep. when it's around that spring time the wearable the white and pink like that's a women's shoe it's going up they come with an extra pair of laces if you watch the sneaker collection video when we talk about the white base with the color yeah for sure like the prime jordan or the prime dunks to get into it meets every mark and then they throw in white laces and it it checks an extra box. Yeah, if you can go white base and get a white lace, man, just go look, I mean, yeah, it's it's money. And so there's some stuff out there. Uh, I know Brandon's into golden rods. We've been buying some Jordan 4, it's kind of crazy. We're, you know, golf. Yeah. Jordan 4 bread golf shoes. Yeah, what do you got, like 15, 20 of them, 17, something? Yeah, I got, because they're at 250, Yeah. 260. Start looking at the numbers, people start golfing in spring. Well, they're Obviously, they're golfing in Arizona right now, but when across the country, spring and summer hit, people are going to be golfing. Guys are going to be wearing that at the Masters and stuff. You, you start just thinking about a bread colorway. Right. Well, look what the white cement golfs you did. It was like kind of out of nowhere. The golf thing wasn't really hooked yet. They did some of the, like the Jordan 5. Yeah. Um, the Jordan 5 golf shoes. And then they dropped the white cement, and then it got people's attention a little bit. And then I feel like that's kind of 
one of the first shoes that got the golf thing going. And now that they're releasing the bread, and when they're releasing the uh, higher, higher quantities, right. so you're going to see them more. Yeah. People are going to be on the golf course seeing them more. When yeah. people start seeing them, realize that they can be wearable, and especially a black. Yeah. You know, you go white or black on a golf course, you can, you'll be all right. Yeah. So small investments. Just trying to find something. Hey, where, where's a shoe that I can make a hundred bucks? Well, hundred every, bucks. Everyone's 100. focused on this stuff. And they're not. Uh, I know. There's so many different avenues in shoes. You know, you can get into the clothing side of it. Someone commented on a video. I think it was our last video. They said, "I only have 100, 200 bucks. What's the best way I can start getting into reselling?" I said, "Why don't you go?" So when Nike does the, you know, the drops and they do the merch with the drops, the clothing, mm -hmm. like a Travis Scott when they did the tees and stuff, the Jordan tees that resell for a good amount, start start getting in on the clothing. Like find a way. There's so many avenues in like the sneaker culture in general when it comes to but everyone just thinks about all the stuff, all the hype stuff, the Jordan ones, they don't think about well, kind of like the entry point. We talked about earlier, a, re a reseller can't can't buy into the hype. Right. They, they should understand hype, they, yeah. they can't buy into the hype. You can't, you can't be a hype reseller. Yeah. Well then you get emotionally attached to the pool gray that you that, swear is gonna be a $400 shoe. Yeah, I know it's gonna yeah, go up. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not gonna go up. It's gonna go down and yeah. then you're wondering why you bought it for 400 bucks, yeah. hoping to sell it for 500. You didn't even have a buyer. Yeah. Look, if you have 100 or $200, don't buy something until you have something sold. I don't know how best to say it. If, if then it's like, well, I don't know who wants to buy it. Well then save your 100 to $200 until you find something like, hey, Bryson, do you want that shoe? Oh, I'd, lo I'd love to have that shoe, I, I, I pay 200 bucks for that and then go find it for 150 and do the quick flip. You know, when you start talking about, hey, I got $1,000, well, then I would much rather, you know, I'd pick two shoes around that 150 mark and I'd buy three of each of them. Because if you put it in all into one shoe, you gotta... Yeah, you gotta you, know. You gotta diversify a little yeah. bit. You have to spread out your risk a little bit because yeah. not everything's a for sure thing. Yeah. But the market looks really good for the next year. Looks really good to buy for the next couple months. Yeah. It's gonna be a great time to buy. I not, think not a lot of demand. Yeah. Well, after Christmas time, and you'll see it in these stores out there watching, January is kind of like the dead month. February's kind of dead, starts to pick back up. But after Christmas time, no one's really spending money. It's kind of, yeah, it's, an, oh, it's just hangover. a, yeah, it's just the trend every single year. Yeah. Um, and then. Well, when people start getting their W-2s. Yeah. And well, they can we start wait, filing yeah. their Tax taxes. Tax return season is going to be right. Then they'll get some refund, and then they have some uh, disposable income. Right. I mean, it's fun talking about a few few shoes. Sorry yeah. that I don't have stacks of cool grays or patent breads to hey, you don't, to show. That but, would be a, that would be a bad influence on the people. But we do have other things that you know we're stacked up on. Well, you heard it from the man himself, Johnson. It was a pleasure having you Thank today. You, you guys asked where's hey. Johnson? He's right here. There I am. And he's still got the brains. Make sure you guys drop a comment down below. Thank Johnson for coming um, today. And of course, if you want to see more of Johnson, if you want more wise words, we can schedule <laughs> something out. He's a busy man though. You know, he's got a tight schedule. So we appreciate him taking the time out today. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel. And of course, leave a comment down below. We'll see you guys in SneakerCon Fort Lauderdale soon here coming up. So again, make sure to mark your calendars. If you guys are in the area for that event, we'd love to meet you guys. Um, the boys will be out there. Johnson will be missing that one, but you know, he might see him at a couple events this year. We just got to plan them out strategically. So um, thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate you.